leaving off on my last video about the resignation of Benedict and the prophecy of the final pope according to St. Malachi. The easiest thing I could do for everyone is come to the generic website, Wikipedia. I'm going to show you a little bit about who St. Malachi was and his prophecy. As you can see up there, he was an Irish saint, Archbishop of Armagh, attributed several miracles and a vision of the identity of the last 112 popes. He was the first Irish saint to be canonized by a pope. And then it goes on to tell a little background about him. can see when he was born way back then in France so your information on his background can be found by a simple search of Saint Malachi on Wikipedia Now we switch over to the Prophecy of the Popes. And this page is at the top of the header. It says it needs additional clarification changes for, for citations for verification. Multiple issues, blah, blah, blah. But it's going to give you the, the gist. You can go to any site you want to that has information about Malachi and the Prophecy. It describes each of the Roman Catholic popes and some anti popes. And here it says that, you know, it's even telling you Benedict's successor, a pope described it as Peter the Roman, whose pontificate will end in the destruction of the city of Rome. First published in 1595, Arnold de Wilne, a Benedictine historian. The church regards this prophecy as a forgery, supposedly. The ambiguous symbolism of the Pope's and fanatical interpretation thereof are regarded as divination and post dictation, respectively. No moral certitude of the prophecy's authenticity, according to Norme Congressionis, since the prophecy is like the prophecies of Nostradamus, which is a sign of forgery, the prophecy of the popes is not regarded as authentic by the church. So that is their stance upon it, according to this information. And then you begin your your list of popes. And we'll come down and scroll down all the way to current popes. In our modern times. 1590 to the present. And here we go here. This is Benedict. Now when he when he listed these popes, he didn't come out and say number two hundred and sixty seven is gonna be Benedict. Because you know the popes always choose their name. Like Joseph Ratzinger chose Benedict. The way he described them is like there over on your left. Glory of the Olive. So when he chose his name, he chose the regnal name Benedict after St. Benedict of Nursia, who was the founder of the Benedictine Order, and the Order's crest contains an olive branch. 
and see how that corresponds. And then you have John Paul II from the labor of the sun. And he was born on May 18, 1920 on the day of a solar eclipse. And entombed Friday, April 8, 2005 on the day of a solar eclipse from the labor of the sun. Born on a solar eclipse, entombed on a solar eclipse. Sun, sun. So Malachi now goes to tell us Peter the Roman will nourish the sheep in many tribulations, supposedly. When they are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed, and the dreadful judge will judge his people. The end. The name of what Petrus Romanus will choose is not set yet, nor is who it will be. It has made mainstream. prior video I showed had just three. They are now jacking it up to eight. Saying it could be Cardinal Angelo Scola, Archbishop of, Mil of Milan. <clears throat> Close ties to conservative communion and liberation movement. Vatican expert John Allen says if you like Benedict you'll love Scola and even if you don't you'll find it hard not to be charmed. And we have Cardinal Marc Ouellet, our former Archbishop of Quebec. He speaks six languages, spent ten years as a missionary in Colombia, strong ties of Latin and South America. He got himself uh, you know, a little news in 2010 when he said abortion was a moral crime, even in cases of rape. He doesn't really consider himself a candidate, though, but he is now. Cardinal Leonard Sandri, Argentina, Italian parents, number two in the Vatican Secretary of State's office under Pope John Paul, who is now prefect of the Congregation for the Oriental Churches well-respected. Gianfranco Ravasi, Italian-born president of the Pontifical Council for Culture. Very pop popular. Archaeologist by training, brainy biblical scholar is seen as a theological moderate. Angelo Bagnasco, Archbishop of Genoa, very well connected. Twice President of Italian Bishops Conference. Had death threats made against him in 2007 after he made comments opposing same-sex union. And he also had launched a scandal, uh, a little attack on uh, scandal ridden Silvio Berlusconi and others. And you have Cardinal Peter Turkson, the first Ghanaian cardinal, president of the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, an appointment on Catholicism in Africa. Odilo Scherer, born in Brazil, hails from the region, is home to half the world's Catholics. A moderate, Archbishop of Sao Paulo. And then we have an American, the head of the Archdiocese of New York, Timothy Dolan. Very popular. He's only been a cardinal for a year. And then there's another little article that I read that the United States supposedly um, on the voting council uh, we have supposedly the second most votes so it's talking about we got a little tiny little sway and who they're going to elect. 
I myself I disagree with them if that's really the Vatican's position of they don't believe in this prophecy I do because I've looked upon it and it does seem to be accurate I mean there's no guy that became Pope that he didn't list and his list ends with this so it's quite obvious that if this is not true there'll be another Pope after this one and one after that and one after that and it'll keep going and if that ever happens then we'll know this is no good but until that is proven this looks like it works so I would say to all we're on the cusp the outer edge of tribulation that's my belief from what I see in the world from what God said to watch for Jesus said to watch for Malachi listed the popes I think we're not in tribulation yet but I think we're very close to entering into it and we know from what things that we've seen and read that the Antichrist will be closely linked with the final pope and the final pope is supposedly going to endorse him so the big man Antichrist is not really come forth so to speak he's not splashed himself out on the scene oh yeah we see public political figures and uh, celebrities and stuff like that uh, you know some think it's Obama some think it's Charles Prince Charles some think it could be Prince William um, and others but nobody's really stepped forward to take that black crown of evil we see him doing evil things and we see possibilities of who it can be but there could be somebody we're overlooking and they've still not performed any miracles there's still things that have to be done Israel is still a marker in the sand too for us to keep our eyes closely peeled about and then we we also have you know things like the two witnesses have not appeared during the tribulation to preach the word to all they've not been killed and left to be viewed by the world for three days we have these other things that have to transpire later on and the fighting continues in Damascus could that possibly be what was described in the Bible it very well can be because that never went in depth into say it would be leveled all at once it's a ruinous heat I mean the continued fighting and everything is damaging things so much that ooh, it looks to me like to me it looks like this is what the Bible said it's just gonna go on until it is totally a ruinous heat uh, right now Damascus is a an area where the fighting is is going on at well, I, ex I fully expect it to become a ruin of seep. So you're seeing these things unfold right in front of you. And that's what I wanted to bring to you about Malachi and how important it is, this Pope changeover, and how certain that I feel that Malachi was true in what he, what he gave us. So God bless everyone think about the things I've said do your own research if you want to but realize the time is getting near